How are you doing, everyone? Welcome to NACL Champions League. I am your good pal, Blake Nader, with my good buddy, T-Con, here to bring you a nice match here tonight. Hope you guys are ready for this. We have ourselves tonight. It is uh, Nemesis Hydra versus Tribeca Gaming. Definitely going to be a great match tonight. What do you think, T-Con? Are you ready for tonight? Going to be exciting, huh? I am just stoked to hop into this game, this series. I think it is going to be super duper, and I'm super excited to see what both of these teams bring to the table. Yeah, definitely just going to be a great match. Uh, can't wait to uh, get right into this, and it looks like we're going to be starting here in just a second. All right, so hopping into draft, what do you think these teams are going to prioritize band-wise? What heroes? Ooh. Uh, definitely think, um, you know, things like Kinetic, maybe a Reza, um, stuff like that. You know, I'm a little rusty when it comes to 5v5. Uh, I'm more of the 3v3 guy myself, but, uh, definitely, um, there's some strong picks there. Celeste are even, um, good ones there. Um, yeah. with, uh, maybe a, you know, Malin or a Kinetic, you know, just really strong heroes right now in the, the current, uh, meta. Yeah, Definitely. You can see all those. You can see Kinsei prioritized. Pretty much all of the newer heroes all have the potential to hard carry a game. So I think we're going to see a lot of priority placed on either banning those away or picking them very early in the draft. Yeah, that is for sure. Um, we are going to definitely be looking, uh, you know, Rome-wise, Arden are going to be some... Arden, Grace, Catherine are going to be some really strong picks. Um, even Grace, you know, going maybe a weapon path, even with the nerf, you know, she's still still uh knocks out you know a good chunk of damage and is a really good just front line to have on your team yeah grace is definitely still super strong even with the nerfs uh we'll definitely see her either banned or picked very early in the draft in this series yeah so it looks like we're going to be seeing a first ban of Malene. you know definitely something you you're gonna see often you know even after two updates and her getting quote unquote nerfs, she's still a powerhouse and still a force to be reckoned with as we see the Kensei follow up ban with the first pick Reza. First pick Reza. I'm definitely a fan of that. Reza is an absolute nightmare for any bot laner to play against. He is so mobile and he has insane damage early on once he gets that aftershock. He yeah. Is so yeah. capable of holding that top lane. Yeah, for sure, and just that w easy way of getting in, getting out, and just giving that burst for the team, like you said, is just really strong as we see the kinetic Lyra come out. Lyra will definitely be a strong pick here. You know, having that bulwark, you know, you can stop that Reza if you place a nice, you know, well-timed bulwark can stop him during his Troublemaker um, and just stop that movement, and kinetic just has, you know, overall just great stats and great damage output. Oh, definitely. So then we see Arden picked up as a roam definitely a strong pick paired with reza that is insane dive potential with the barrier from vanguard to get him in and out safely yeah and then Hopping being able to drop over. down that gauntlet uh giving you know blocks them in gives that more you know free reign for the reza because the reza can go in get a few hits off go out of the gauntlet it has his ability to just recharge and just gives him more you know ma maneuverability mm-hmm all right, so our next set of bands, we have Samuel and Varia. Maybe somewhat unorthodox, but that does take away two incredibly strong mid laners and could almost force maybe a mid lane Lyra if they were to want to break the, the mold of uh, typical mid laners a little bit. Yeah, that is definitely an option, uh, going like a mid lane Lyra with like a Rome, Catherine, or, or even if they're feeling, feeling feisty, a Rome, Churnwalker. Ooh. Definitely not bad options, but hopping back over to A side, we see Celeste and that Glaive picked up. Those are two powerhouse picks. And I know Glaive especially has been crushing it this patch. He is insane, an insane presence in the early and mid game. Definitely something to watch out for. Yeah, being able to get in with the afterburn, and if you go something like a tension bow or even just straight into the sorrow blade, he has just mad burst potential uh, using his. Uh, his foe splitter um and all that is just oof. <laughs> all right so then we see scarf 
picked up and two quick bands, Adagio and Vox. So going into this last set of picks, what do you think we'll see here? Oof. Well, I think I think maybe um a crawl uh, possibly here would be a strong selection um going like a, a bot lane um glaive or possibly even like a Ringo or a Gwen would work as well. Well, just as you say it, there's the Ringo. That is going to be certainly interesting. I'm not entirely sure who the other side's top laner is going to be, but Ringo, especially if he gets ahead early on, can be an absolute nightmare to deal with. If he gets an early Sorrow Blade or Tension Bow. And sure enough, there is the Grace. Maybe not quite as early as we predicted, but rounding out our draft, there she is. Yeah, it's a solid choice, you know. Like I said, uh, if you go the weapon path, you know, she's able to get that little bit of chip damage in, even though it's not, like, as strong late game. But having that extra body, you know, the holy shield from her benediction, uh, giving that defensive buff to her teammates can just be so much in a fight, even, even if it doesn't seem like much. Yeah, and if she does play in top lane against the Ringo, if she builds some early armor, she is impossibly tanky and just can be real problem for Ringo if he doesn't manage to get a CS lead and get ahead early on. Yeah, yeah, the early armor and then being able to dive in with the benediction with the gap close can just be a strong way to just jump on him early game and kind of just starve him out if she if she can get there. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, I think we have our two compositions rounded out quite nicely. Yep, so on side A, sitting with Nemesis Hydra, side B, Tribeca Gaming. This is going to be game one of a best of three here for tonight for NACL. Hope you guys are all excited for this match and are just enjoying it so far. Give us, you know, tell us what you think of the draft in the, con you know, in the, in the chat. And uh, who you think is going to win, give us uh, like a hashtag Nemesis Hydra or hashtag Tribe Tribeca on who you think is going to come out on top in this game one as we get into this first game of the series. Okay. Welcome back after that quick commercial break as we get here into the first game of Nemesis Hydra versus Tribeca Gaming. Typical just, you know, lolling about. Yeah, early on, I don't think we're going to see a ton of priority placed on capturing the enemy team's crystal treants. We have both junglers in bot lane and uh, looks pretty standard. You've got your roamers and mid laners just farming it up, but there's not a ton of early aggression early on, which with Celeste and Scarf, that's to be expected. They both definitely don't have the strongest early game. Yeah, that is for sure. We do see them both. Uh, we uh, Kinetic, Tony, and Scarf going for the left side Crystal Treant, though. It looks like they are going to be able to secure that as Glaives here onto the Lyra as they try to take the counter uh, Crystal Treant for their side. And it looks like they are yeah. going to be able to secure it. Actually, Lyra with the Sigil popping it just in time to take that Crystal buff. So that's going to be a double buff for the, for the side of Tribeca Gaming as they get first blood there on the Reza from Kinetic. Great job for, for Tribeca getting that early aggression and uh, getting the both, both buffs on both sides. Yeah, and that could prove to be huge for Tribeca. Lyra can provide a pretty immense amount of early game pressure. And with both Lyra and the Scarf having the Crystal buff, this could be a pretty rough early laning phase for the Celeste. You see she's already popped her Flask, 
She's got uh, she's got a full wave to farm, but Scarf is going to be able to rotate, or sorry, not rotate, but port back to base and have a few more items on her and the rest of that CP buff. That's a pretty relevant early game. Yeah, yeah, the CP buff is definitely a good uh, early game boost there. You know, having only like a few items, like a Crystal Bitter Energy Battery, giving that little bit of an extra kick just helps out a lot. And Lyra having the second one is going to give them so much uh, just poke potential, uh, having that double CP buff there in the mid lane. Yeah, definitely. And you can see from that one rotation, getting the CP buff and Lyra stealing the other one, Scarf was able to port. And now he has three crystal bits, boots, and an energy battery. And that can definitely be really relevant as he gets into levels three and four and starts hitting, you know, a couple hundred per Spitfire. That's really relevant damage early on to a Celeste who, you know, might not be that tanky. Yeah, being the, you know, the squishy character she is, it'll be good, especially for hitting this farm early on. They are going to be able to get both of those uh, jungle minions as they're going to just sigil out of there. Uh, looking to possibly get here for a, you know, a little bit of a gank there on the Celeste Tony here, but the scout cam is going to reveal them as we see a Spitfire come out. Just a little bit of poke here and there. Yeah. If you look over to the far side of the map, you can see Glaive is rotating, trying to steal the enemy back. So he's leashed them all the way down behind that uh, the rock formation, but he's getting spotted out by Lyra. And we see Ringo rotating up with Tony right behind. This could be interesting right here. Yeah, there goes the taunt coming out from Tony. He's going to pop the flask on Glaive as well as Tony, though. Tony is going to be able to take on the Glaive. Ringo trying to get the kill, but we see Grace, Lyra, and Scarf come down as Tony gets out of there safely. Scarf going to get the kill, and that's going to be double kill for the side of Tribeca Gaming as Tony makes it out alive. Yeah, and that is just an excellent rotation from the Lyra and the Scarf. It's going to end up costing the Scarf just a few CS in lane. But getting the double kill there and securing the backs is immensely important, especially for this Grace, who now gets a wave or two to just farm in peace without the pressure of Ringo and Glaive being there. Oof, nice Spitfire goop combo, taking Celeste down by quite a bit. Having to pop the flask there uh, is going to be very nice uh, for this Scarf as we just see the Sigil coming out for more just poke damage. Not having any really like health regen as the Spitfire goop comes out from the scarf having you know that trip like you said that triple crystal bit definitely helping dish out that damage here in the early game yeah just like i'd mentioned between securing that extra farm getting the kills scarf with two kills on him already and the crystal bits he is a yeah. full level above celeste and had more items and with the lyra sigil poking and his spitfires landing that's a lethal combination early on yeah, that is definitely the case for sure, as we do see Glaive and Ringo are able to take out the Grace. Grace getting that first item spell weave, I, I, I kind of like it. You know, having that early tank, the, the slow as well as the movement speed will be very helpful. More of a team fight build uh, start there for the Grace. Yeah, so we're seeing that even though it is a top lane Grace, those weapon nerfs have definitely impacted the way it's played. So this is going to be more of a CP utility Grace. And that could prove really helpful in team fights when you're trying to keep that uh that scarf safe, yeah, the kinetic safe. Quick, but we see the dragon's breath coming out from scarf. Scarf gonna be able to take out the uh, Arden as the crucible comes out a little late, to block the afterburn. So the spit dragon's breath is gonna get interrupted as they are able to back out though, taking a life from the Arden, looking to push this lane a little bit. Yeah, and once again, you know, it all comes back to that early level two, level three lead that scarf got he's already got his level six he's got his items here comes the so afterburn coming out from glaive is gonna punt scarf back by a little bit here comes the core class followed by a S imperial area heliogenesis sigil not coming out in time to <laughs> save the scarf as they're gonna be able to take him out there in the mid lane yeah that was super close and scarf just about juked them but the excellent celeste stun comes through and that will help celeste a little bit in the early game as she transitions to this mid game but, you know, Scarf's already right back up. He's got the uh, the Shatter Glass on board, and that's a pretty relevant item. It's uh, a significant more amount of CP. Celeste prioritized the, uh, the Spellfire, which, you know, does provide the mortal wounds, but Scarf is going to have just absolutely immense upfront damage. And that could prove to be really relevant. He uh, gets maybe a team-wide Dragon's Breath off. Yeah, we do see Tony is going to be able to take that Crystal Treant Celeste trying to uh, 
give a little bit of chase he there uh, for it, but not able to take it. As we see, Reza is a little low. Tony going up, trying to get the kill. There goes the Kinetic using her A. Not quite going to finish him off as the flask is popped. Turret is going to be taken out by Ringo, though, in the bottom. Dragon's Breath is going to come out. Here comes the Afterburn. Going to stun the Scarf out of the Dragon's Breath. Good job by Glaive there. As we do see the um, Arcane Passage is going to come out. There goes the Hellfire Brew landing onto the Scarf. Scarf is going to take some nice damage. There goes the Spitfire Goop Combo onto the Ringo. Ringo taking a nasty chunk there as they're looking to counter push this turret here. Grace a little low, but having that uh, Spell Weave... Uh, the Pulse Weave is going to be able to get out of there with a little bit of speed boost. It's going to use the um, the her ult on herself to heal back up a bit, and they're going to be able to get out safely, but at the loss of a turret, good job by Ringo and them getting a nice push there at the bottom lane. Yeah, definitely a counter push, as we've seen, uh, we've seen a lot more priority on maintaining that mid lane, and the uh, the Arden has been camped, uh, camped there, but as he rotated down with Glaive and Ringo, they were definitely rewarded there while Lyra and Scarf were entrenched in that mid lane. So definitely a good rotation there. Yeah, doing a good job you know, with their rotations. That is the key thing here in a 5v5 map is uh, getting your rotations off well. There was another Spitfire goop combo coming out from Scarf doing some nasty damage. That Shatter Glass putting in some work here as we see Reza coming down. Bulwark, like I mentioned, you know, well placed Bulwark can stop Reza from getting that burst damage out, able to stop the Troublemaker, and they're going to be able to get out safely. Yeah, and even if the Bulwark isn't perfectly timed, just the movement slow, movement speed slow from it, even if it doesn't completely block the animation and prevent him from moving inside with his B, that can be relevant enough to let Scarf get away safely, as we just saw. Yeah, for sure. There goes an Afterburn but with the Troublemaker. He's going to try to ult out of there, but Ringo going to get an Achilles shot out there to finish him off and Tony goes down. Yeah, that's uh that's gonna be one of their main win conditions is comboing that afterburn with any sorts of other CC and Ringo's immense damage that he can put out. So it looks like they're gonna be prioritizing this ghost wing. Sure enough, that's a clean capture right there, a five man rotation to that dragon. And this could pr prove to be uh pretty impactful here early on. Yeah, we do see, though, Kinetic able to get that second turret there in the top lane. Uh, as we do see, Reza going to get the final hit on the Scarf. Scarf goes down. So, you know, a turret for a kill, I'd say definitely good for the side of Tribeca Gaming. As we see Kinetic fighting the Reza here, trying to secure the kill. Reza is going to go. Oh, there goes the ult. Going to try to survive. There's the flask, but not going to be enough. Kinetic going to be able to take him down as this fight in mid lanes. They try to push this turret with that buff. Grace just, you know, tanking a good amount of that damage. Celeste with a little bit. There goes the Holy Nova. Core class is going to land onto the Grace, though. Crucible not coming out in time as Grace goes down. Losing the minions, though, are not going to be able to push that turret right this second. Ooh, there goes the ult coming out from Tony. Going to knock Celeste back a little bit. Kinetic going in, doing some nice damage onto the Arden. Arden getting kind of low. Core Collapse going to come off, stunning the Tony. Tony getting very low. There goes the Solar Storm. Not quite going to connect onto the Tony, but going to land on Kinetic and the Lyra as she just continues to pour out that Spellfire damage. It may not be as much as a Shatter Glass, but that continuous damage can be a lot against the Lyra with that Mortal Wound. Yeah, definitely. And that was the first Tony ult I think we've seen all game. And I'm really, really intrigued to see how he's going to utilize it later on in this game. If uh, if Arden doesn't Crucible it, that can be a major, major ability to get Celeste out of position, which is going to be one of their main win conditions. Yeah, we do see, though, the counter uh, turret there in the bot lane, able to get that second turret in the bot lane for the side of uh, high Nemesis there. Uh, so pretty even, evenly matched so far here in this match. Yeah. So to take a break from the action and talk about builds for a second, I'm really intrigued by Tony's double spell sword build. That's uh, maybe not unorthodox, but I don't know if that's what we regularly see on a weapon Tony. He's definitely prioritizing the cooldowns and uh, the lockdown, the immense lockdown that Tony can provide over more damage, which I think is definitely the right play to do. But it's at yeah. the loss of a more relevant early game. Ooh, there goes the Arcane Passage coming out from Lyra as they all try to get in onto this three-man squad. 5v3 right now, a gauntlet comes down. Not quite going to stop them from getting the Celeste. Celeste goes down as well as the Arden. And uh, it's going to be a 3v5 from here on. Glaive trying to do some nice damage. After it comes out, it's going to get stunned. There goes the ult from Kinetic. They're going to get body blocked by the Reza, though, as they're able to get out of there safely. 
but a good job by the side of Tribeca being able to catch out that three-man squad and take out the Arden and Celeste. That's going to be a mid-lane turret for them. Yeah, absolutely. That was an excellent rotation to five-man the mid-lane from Tribeca. You saw the engage with the Lyre Portal and Scarf Ult immediately following it up, and that's, con that's insanely relevant damage early on before everyone has a ton of shield. And as a follow-up, we can see Tribeca trying to capture this Ghost Wing. And unless Glaive does something crazy, I think they'll get it cleanly. Yeah, and a quick, quick, you know, insert about, you know, what you're saying about the double spell sword. Uh, you know, you don't normally see it on a weapon, Tony, but I see where he's going with this. Being able to get that taunt, you know, the, to get the come at me bro perk up, as well as just getting them, you know, locked down for a second, as well as getting that stun off from his uh, haymaker, can just be, you know, massive damage. They're going to be able to catch out Tony. Tony taking a lot there as Ringo is going to be able to finish him off. So, not good for Tony. Yeah, this has been very, very back and forth. And we can see Tribeca, they've had really excellent rotations. They've gotten two Ghost Wings, but they keep getting caught out. And as we see, it could punish them. Nemesis Hydra is trying to secure this Black Claw. And Tribeca is scattered all over the place. They don't really have any sort of coordinated team effort to contest this. Yeah, Oki looking to possibly steal it with a Sigil, though. Sigil comes out, not quite going to take it, as um, Nemesis Hydra is going to take the Black Claw and look to push a bit in this mid lane. Yeah, that's a clean secure right there. And you can see Glaive's got a Spell Sword online, Ringo's got an Infusion in Pocket. This could prove to be a pretty, pretty impactful push. Yeah, they're going to be able to take out that first turret and continue to push this Black Claw. Black Claw at about half health right now. Uh, as it continues to just push down this lane spell. Pulse Weave going off from the Grace. Going to get a little bit of a slow there on the enemy team as they just continue to push this. They're going to back off, though. Black Claw going down. Uh, but, hey, they got one turret out of it. Say so it was definitely worth it. And it kept them. The end of, you know, other team didn't get the Black Claw. So, got to be positive for the side of a Nemesis. Yeah, definitely. In such a close back-and-forth game, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely something. Every turret helps. And uh, you can see it, it actually increased the gold lead slightly for uh, the side of Tribeca. But having that first mid lane turret pushed is going to prove to be pretty, pretty impactful. And uh, at the same time, Ringo was able to rotate to that bot lane and push out two or three waves of CS there, forcing, uh, forcing two, two people of the side of Tribeca to rotate down there and stop that wave from pushing. Yeah. Uh, a quick thing I'd like to point out is this Grace build, you know, not going CP or Weapon, going more of a elite utility Grace build with the Pulse Weave, the Rook's Decree, the War Treads, and now going towards what looks like a Storm Crown. So more of an objective and team-oriented build coming out. I kind of like it, you know, with the comp they have, they want to be able to get in and just go down. Gauntlet comes out from uh, Arden as they lock the Grace down a little bit. As the Fountain comes out, Arden is going to be taken out. There's an ult from Tony, not quite going to connect on anyone but is going to get him into the fray there. Ringo doing some nice damage, gonna be able to take out the Tony. Tony goes down, but so does the Ringo. Holy Nova not quite gonna connect onto the Reza as Reza tries to get out. There goes the Core Collapse, gonna land onto the Lyra. Reza goes down to the Kinetic as we see the Aftermer come out to get him out of there. It's 4v2 right now. Core Collapse comes down, gonna get that double stun off onto the Grace and the Kinetic as they are going to be able to get out safely, but that's gonna be a free Ghost Wing for the side of Tribeca Gaming. Yeah, that was an excellent team fight from the side of Tribeca. They took advantage of Arden, who placed an excellent gauntlet, but then slightly overstepped, overextended. And uh, once they got him down, they were able to fully commit to the engage with the Lyra portal. And uh, from there, it's easy pickings one by one. And you can see they get a clean ghost wing off of that. And uh, once they push these waves, they'll have a pretty immense amount of map control. Yeah, having, you know, the comp, I like I said, I, that utility build from Grace is working out really well. It's giving them an even stronger frontline than like a weapon or a CP Grace would be. Um, because you have enough damage there with the Scarf and the Tony and that Kinetic, that just having that extra health in the frontline just is enough for them to win these team fights. Yeah, definitely. And since they don't have a true traditional frontline support, they have the Lyra instead. Having that grace there to soak up the frontline damage, maybe to tank up the Ringo or the Glaive, it's pretty immense. It's a very, very relevant position that the grace is playing. 
Yeah, that's for sure. Hellfire Brute is going to come out. Solar Storm is going to connect onto the Lyra and the Grace. But uh, that Spitfire damage coming out. There goes the Tony in with the Haymaker. Going to take out the Celeste. Gauntlet comes down, but not really going to stun anyone off of it. As the Kinetic comes in, continuing to do some nice damage. The ult comes out. It's going to land onto the Reza. Reza goes down to a Dragon's Breath as they continue to just chase this. Arden getting really low. Arcane Passage does come out as they're able to get that second mid lane turret. Looking to possibly push for a third. Still having a few minions there. Spitfire group combo is going to do some nice damage. As the taunt comes out, it's going to lock the Glaive in, forcing him out of his port. And Glaive is going to go down as they look to take this armory and possibly just end the game right here. We've got a five-man squad here with three people down on the side of Nemesis. It looks like that's going to be it with the Ghost buff up. The Ghost Wing buff up. There goes Arden. Arden goes down. The uh, Aegis is getting, you know, right there at the end, and that's going to be game one for Tribeca Gaming. Man, what an onslaught there at the end. Really shows you just the immense power of that Ghostwing buff. And, you know, as, as just Nemesis Hydra just didn't pick great fights there, especially that one at the end. You know, Arden gauntleted, but right as he did, Celeste died. You know, that just completely ruins their entire engage. And from that point, it's just easy pickings for Tribeca, just picking them off one by one and pushing at the same time. That scarf with the, the Shatterglass Clockwork Spellfire. It's just in, insane damage. Yeah, lots of burst potential coming out from there as uh, we see game one going over to Tribeca. It was definitely a really good match. You know, Nemesis, they had some good plays, you know, good rotations throughout that game. But in the end, Tribeca just bringing their comp out on top. They were just not able to bring it out there against Tribeca. And so for that, they get take, they get game one. Yeah, definitely not to be understated as the impact of the kinetic in that game. And at 6-0 and, oh and 5, and having the most gold on the team, uh, she definitely, even though we didn't talk about as much, had an, a pretty imp impactful uh, late game presence. Once she got her items, she got that Aegis online, she just you know didn't die. And it helps that they had the pretty insane front line, but she was pumping out really relevant damage in those team fights. Even though we were talking about the Scarf, she was there by his side the whole time, doing just as much work as the Scarf did. So hands or hats off to Tribeca, uh, just really pulling that uh, that composition off well, especially in the late game. Yeah, it just worked out really well. You know, they were able to get the damage out, able to push those lanes very well when they were grouped up, able to, you know, even if they just took out one or two people, they had amazing push potential. And uh, they were able to just use that to their advantage and secure that game. All right, well, I think that just about wraps up game one, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, uh, we're just about ready to get here into game two and a draft two here. Uh, for this best of three series, you know, hope you guys are having a good time. You know, Nemesis Hydra versus Tribeca Gaming. Tribeca Gaming up one game to none. As we go here into the second draft, we see the Kinetic and the Lyra first bands. You know, definitely really strong bands there. Great roam, great laner. Uh, you know, especially that that bottom lane, uh, just does a lot of work. Yeah, and we see the Lyra band, but then there's the Kinsei first pick. And I think that is going to prove to be really strong. The, uh, the Kinsei can put in some huge work in the late game once he, get, he gets his items. And with that barrier from his perk, he is just insanely tanky. Yeah, the, the barrier, you know, especially if they have some heavy health, uh, you know, heroes in that enemy lineup. Um, being able to use that to your advantage, you know, get in there, do some damage. But if you time it right, get that third attack off on, you know, like a roam, having all that health, you get that bigger barrier and you can just wreck immensely with his build. Yeah, definitely. And as much as we've raved about the Kinsei pick, it was at the cost of giving over the Maylene and then the Vox shortly after. So Maylene could prove to be a pretty pretty impactful power pick. She obviously has, she pretty much just has it all. Her kit is absolutely stacked. And uh, that could prove to be really relevant if they can take full advantage of it. Yeah, and having a Vox there with the Maylene uh, can just be really strong. Um, and it's definitely going to be, you know, strong two picks. If we see the Arden Ben come out, so banning both the Lyra and the Arden, definitely very interesting uh, tactic right there. 
Yeah, so both roams that were used last game are banned. So this could, uh, this could make both teams look towards something like a Catherine, or even as you mentioned earlier, Churnwalker as unorthodox as that would be. Yeah, Churnwalker would definitely be a strong one. Um, being able to you know disrupt them enough with the uh, the pole after get, landing the hook and chains, and then getting a nice tremor uh, or a trespass off can just be very devastating. As we see the Catherine pick up there, uh, definitely a strong one. Being able to get that stun off as well as the silence uh, that can definitely lock down a Reza uh, very fairly well. Yeah, but then to counter that, there's the Finn. And uh, Finn is really, really interesting. He's not super great in the Vox. You can stack off of him, but he completely negates Catherine's impact. Catherine just can't touch him. And uh, to follow it up, there's the Celeste. And Finn provides a really, really relevant front line for her. Uh, it's definitely tough to get through him. And I think that's, that's a pretty good, pretty good set of picks right there to, uh, to counter this Catherine. Yeah, definitely can be um, very uh, helpful. There goes the Tony pick, though. You know, Saw worked really well in this last last game. Maybe it'll work well again uh, here in this game, especially having that Malene getting the stun and the root combo with the Catherine. You know, they have a lot of crowd control in their comp right here. Yeah, definitely. And even though the Reza, the Kinsei, they can be kind of slippery, at some point, some stun, some root, it's going to land. You can't block everything. You can't dodge everything. So we'll just have to see how well they can chain all of their CC once they finally land something. And uh, I think that could prove to be the turning point of this game is if they can find a couple team fights where they can lock down this Kinsei and the Reza right as they try to engage, or if they can rush in and land multiple stuns or roots onto the Celeste. Yeah, that is definitely going to be the case uh, here. can be really devastating here in this... Uh selection as uh, we're waiting for that next ban as we see the Kroll ban coming out. Ooh. Slightly unorthodox. Kroll isn't seeing a ton of play recently, but there's the Glaive ban to counter that, and Glaive definitely, even though he put in a ton of work last game, like I mentioned beforehand, Glaive can still be incredibly relevant if he can get ahead early on. And unfortunately, last game, Glaive wasn't able to but he always presents that threat. And we see Adagio coming out next. And uh, I, really, I really think this could be an interesting pick. I'm assuming it's going to be some sort of top lane Adagio. Although we could see maybe a utility Adagio like we did the Grace last game. If they that do choose be, to put the Adagio in top lane. Especially with the, you know, the recent uh, rework uh, to Adagio since the last update, giving that bonus uh, healing based on his health. Um, into his uh, arcane uh, fire can just be really, or his gift of fire can be really strong and give nice burst healing. Yeah, that's definitely going to be pretty relevant, especially if Celeste is in any sort of trouble. That's, you know, a pretty, pretty solid amount of peel between that and the Finn to, uh, to keep Tony and Celeste, or it's Tony, C Tony and Catherine, sorry, off of the Celeste. As we see, the draft is rounded out by Lorelei. So what do you think about this pick? I kind of like it. Um, I think yeah. it you know, can be really strong, um, especially, you know, possibly even in the mid lane. But um, having that barrier, the, the speed boost to help out your team um, can just be really sh strong. And if you can land those stuns, uh, it's, it's, it's very, you know, they have a lot of crowd control there. there yeah. There's a lot of crowd control in that comp, and that's going to be disgusting if they can chain that at all. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but but uh, before we get into this game two, we'll be right back into the game after a quick message from our sponsors.
Welcome back, everyone, here into game two of this best of three series. We have Tribeca Gaming on side A with Nemesis Hydra on side B here uh, for this second match. Great comps on both sides. You know, great game in the first game between the two teams. Both put up a good fight. Tribeca Gaming is up one game to zero as we get started here in this game two of uh, Tribeca versus Nemesis Hydra. Yeah, I am beyond stoked to see how this Nemesis Hydra comp plan or pans out. They have just so much CC between the Catherine, the Lorelei, the Tony. I, I, I am beyond ecstatic to see how that pans out. Lorelei throwing pools everywhere. But at the same time, this top lane Adagio coming out of Tribeca, who did take game one, that could prove to be their foil. Yeah, it could definitely be, you know, really strong. Going like maybe a utility, um, a utility CP mix on the Adagio would definitely be something uh, worth trying, um, and I think it would work pretty well. You know, having that, you know, the continuous heal on top of the burst heal, and then having the burn coming out from the arcane fire can just be really strong. Yeah, definitely. So unlike last time, I think we might have a little bit more of uh the early game skirmishes that we sometimes see but uh yeah, here we go adagio is engaging on the vox definitely some pretty relevant poke there but at the same time here comes here comes tony Ooh, almost with the first kill right off the bat here comes catherine they're gonna get this done off and tony's gonna be able to get that first blood as celeste just goes for the farm so you know yeah. definitely i think an even trade-off um, not going to be able to get too much of a push out of the lane in these first few minutes. So being able to take that jungle farm, I think, you know, the, the first blood gold will definitely compensate for that, but definitely worth it. Yeah, that is true. Although Adagio definitely wasn't quick enough to recognize that he was overextending. And with the Tony there, he probably could have recognized that he might have been in a bit of trouble. But as you said, the Celeste was able to get some farm and you know, kind of counter that uh that early game gold given over by first blood. So all in all, eh. still just a pretty even <laughs> matchup right here at the start. I mean, it's early game, uh, not too much with these comps. You're not going to see too many you know high level engagements um, in these first few minutes. More like around the four or five minute mark is when you're going to see those big team fights start to pan out. Yeah, for sure. Definitely something to watch out for is level six when you've got the Celeste ult and the Finn ult on board. That's, that's pretty relevant in terms of uh, changing the landscape of team fights. Yeah, and, and the uh, Kensei ult as well. You know, if you can get that Kensho stance off uh, and then get that ult on with a stun, that can be pretty devastating. Yeah, those are all really, really impactful ults. Although that's not to say that Catherine's silence or Lorelai's... Uh, her bubble, the waterfall, I believe it's called, with that barrier aren't. Yeah, definitely, you know, a lot of good utility coming out from uh, from the side of Nemesis Hydra. Yeah, so as we see, uh, let's pan up to Vox farming away in that, that bot lane. Him and Tony look to be pretty coordinated with their rotations which uh, is a slight change of pace from last time. The, uh, we see the Vox... Oh, just as I was about to say, the Vox rotating with the Tony, Vox backs off. So uh, maybe more of the same. Although against Adagio, who's got uh, the components to Swarm Crown, you definitely can't leave lane for too long or else you'll find your entire wave pushed into turret and all of a sudden you're losing CS. Yeah, that is definitely... You know, that can definitely easily be the case. You know, a heavy pushed lane means less farm for your enemy, which means you get ahead of them, and that can just mean the game right off the bat there in some cases. Yeah, and just like I mentioned, it looks like Adagio is going to be headed, instead of a carry build, towards that utility that we saw from Tribeca in the first game. And that worked out so well for them. That was a really, really great decision on their part. And I think, uh, I think it's really wise to continue that trend in game two and... Uh, Trust that your other two carries in a jungler will have enough damage that uh, you can prioritize that healing. And you know what better 
hero to do it with than the OG healer, Adagio. Yeah, that is definitely true. <clears throat> Remember back in the day when Adagio was one of the most you know OP meta picks when it came to roaming, and then even with that CP path, it's like you don't see much of him nowadays, but when you do, it brings back the memories. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm so so excited to see how he can incorporate these uh these new items that SCMC has added. As you see, Tony gets a bit of burst damage, but Adagio heals it right back Ooh, up. Reza That's gonna be and Kensei going in onto the Lorelei there in the bottom lane, looking to possibly push this turret turret shot. Not quite gonna be able to take out Kensei. Uh, oh, not, qu out. not quite. Solar Storm yeah. coming off, gonna land onto the Catherine. All of them getting really low as we see Tony coming down. He's gonna go onto the Finn, doing some nice damage. Heliogenesis is going to be able to take Tony down half health as we see Adagio coming down for a bit of support, giving us some healing, and he's going to be able to back out. Fountain being picked up by Catherine, so that's going to be a good spike there on their side. Fountain coming down as Reza goes in on Tony. The burst damage coming out, doing some nice damage. There goes a the flash. As he's going to be able to finish him off, there goes a the flash for Tony. Tony trying to get out of there. The quibble not quite going to connect as the stun from Lorelei comes down and is going to land onto the Reza, um, knocking him away as the Tony is going to be able to get out by the hair of his chitty chin chin. Yeah, the name of that little skirmish is Missed Opportunities. You saw Finn had the opportunity to, uh, to land a stun on the Tony and maybe not kill him, but slow him down. And he just whiffed. And then at the same time, on the other end, you see... Uh, you see the Catherine escaping from the Reza. So, close but no cigar. But. Reza is going to be able to go in and get a nice kill onto the, the Malin though. As we see Fountain coming out from Finn. Corklap's going to land onto the Tony. Reza still alive there. This Reza putting in some work. Solar Storm point blank right into the Tony's face just like a shotgun. And he's out of there for the count. As we see Adagio just continuing to push this top lane against this box, doing some nice damage with that Storm Crown. Yeah, just like I said earlier, that Storm Crown makes it almost impossible for Vox to leave this lane. And even though Vox is building damage and Adagio isn't, Adagio can almost outtrade this Vox, especially if he lands that Arcane Fire onto him. Yeah, landing the Arcane Fire um, and then, you know, proccing his B to get that you know the bonus damage from his basic attacks can just be a lot um even if you don't have much damage yeah and uh a change that i want to mention last game the first two items on uh on our two cp carries we had a shatter glass out of one and a spell fire out of the other and uh i think it may have uh the spell fire may not have worked out how they had hoped because now we see two two Reza shatter glasses. Reza going to try to get out. Tony locking onto them though with the haymaker and is going to be able to take him out. Reza going a little bit too far into that fight. Yeah, just a bit of an overextension, and I don't think he had counted on getting locked down like that. Oh, nice healing, Genesis Solar Storm going to come out. There goes the Forest Accord, not quite going to land the Quibble. As you see the basic attack coming out, there goes Helio Genesis is going to be able to take out the Malin, and that's going to be another kill for Tribeca Gaming. Malin not quite able to get out of there, as we see a nice three-man push going in on top, looking for the counter turret at top to compensate for that mid turret, but that mid turret is just not going to go down. Oh, snap. Nemesis yeah, Hydra, it, knowing where it's at, trusting the timing on their minion. Oof. Yeah, it will end up going down, but that'll save them a little bit of time. And uh, they were able to get, like you said, that excellent push in uh, what is their bot lane. Uh, what we're seeing is our top lane. Um, so definitely not a complete loss for uh, for Nemesis Hydra, even though they did lose... Uh, Lose their melee and the mid lane turret. Yeah, but we do see Ghost Wing is going to be taken by Tribeca Gaming there, uh, giving him a nice buff as we just see a nice chip damage coming out from this Re Reza. Reza looking to dive in on the melee, but the Tony coming up here against this Adagio. Adagio is going to be taking some nasty damage as he uh, tries to get out of there. Doing some nice work himself, though. With that storm crown, the arcane fire coming out. There goes the burst of judgment, but not quite gonna go off in time for that double sun as we see them get the kill there in the top lane and looking to push this wave a little bit. Yeah, I think Adagio might have just overestimated how much healing. Oof, he had. There goes Reza there with the troublemaker. 
getting those fire starter stacks, doing some nice damage on the Malin. Malin goes down as I look to push this wave, but the minions are going to be able to have them back off. Uh, those nice turret shots doing some massive damage there. Yeah. The, definitely a good way to push that mid lane just as Adagio dies in top and that gets pushed a little bit. Both teams doing a great job of recognizing where to focus their efforts. So uh, I've got to commend both of them, both teams, for uh, having that coordination and communication. That's uh, it's really great to see that they uh, they know what's going on and they have great map awareness. Yeah, so, they're doing a phenomenal to job uh, here, both sides. You know, kills are pretty even. It's five to four right now. Uh, you know, Tribeca does have a slight gold lead, just at about four K right now as they get this top turret there. Um, first one of uh, for their side in the top lane. Uh, but, uh, you know, a little bit of a gold lead there is gonna definitely seeing it help out and you're seeing the difference in these builds and the damage output, but pretty even for the most part on both sides. Yeah, but I think, uh, I think Tribeca, their comp is gonna scale slightly better into the late game. Um, you know, Nemesis Hydra has that, they have the Vox, but, uh, while they both have pretty strong late games. It's not the best. There's a team fight break out. He forced the court comes out. Crystal is going to block the silence as we do see him do some nice damage. Uh, Tony trying to go in, but he's going to be taking a lot of damage in the process. There is the solo storm. Not quite going to connect onto the Tony. Finn getting pretty low there, but uh, still, there goes the nice heal your Genesis. It's going to land the core collapse. Rez is going to go in with the troublemaker if you get the final kill onto the Tony. There goes a fountain coming off from Finn as they're going to be able to refresh and push this second turret, uh, looking to stop them from backing off. They got a fresh minion wave. Looks like they might look to possibly go for this third turret here. Yeah, and even though they don't have Tribeca, Ooh, there is goes still Reza super healthy. The troublemaker is going to be able to take down. Can't take it to finish off that Catherine. Not quite going to go down to the turret. There goes the Solar Storm. Not quite going to connect onto anyone, but a good effort as they're able to back off. No deaths and able to get one and a quarter turret off of that push. Yeah, and that was incredibly well played by Tribeca, juggling at making sure that they weren't able to engage too hard onto the Celeste. And as you saw, they they got a bunch of kills, they got the turret, and they traded it for no deaths, which is super impactful. And like I said, as they're gonna scale better into this late game, even as they're as they're even pretty much in the mid game, having that much of an advantage already is incredibly powerful. As you can see, they've increased their gold lead to almost 5k. That's pretty powerful. And with the clean capture of the Ghost Wing, they're gonna be able to put some insane pressure on whichever lane they choose to focus on. Yeah, Reza going in with the Troublemaker. There goes the ult. Gonna get some nice damage off, but turret shots. Catherine's done. Solar Storm is gonna take out the Molino. As we see the Adagi Hill coming off onto the Reza. Reza gonna be able to get out of there. Fountain uh, was popped on the side for Finn, so it's gonna be healed back up as they're able to secure the kill on Malene, and Kense is going to get a nice push and secure this second turret there in the bottom lane. Yeah, and the pressure from Tribeca right now is just stuffing. It's overwhelming. And uh, you can see they've they've fully got this game under control. You've got a Kense that, you know, isn't needing to prioritize defense. He's gone straight into, uh, into three tier three attack speed items. And he's just going to be able to proc that perk even faster, stack that breaking point, and start getting some crits going. And they look to be fully in control of this game, maybe looking to take a Black Claw here, maybe even a nice team fight and an ace to go with it. Yeah, we do see the three men from uh, Nemesis Hydra there looking to contest this a bit. There goes the uh, A coming out from uh, Malin. Solar Storm's going to come down and do some nice damage there on the enemy team. Collapse is going to stun the Catherine. Catherine is going to go down to the Adagio as we see Reza going in, looking to take out the Tony. Tony not quite going to be finished off there uh, as we see Kente going in, uh, do some nice damage. They are all going to be able to back off uh, and they were able to stop the Black Claw, so really good job by them. Now, one thing I'd like to point out real quick is similarities in both these games for Tribeca Gaming. Having that, you know, the first game, they had you know, the utility front line of Grace and they had that backline heal of Lyra. What do they have in this game? They got that front line tank of Finn with that fortified health from his polite company and the backline tank and heal from Adagio with those heals. 
similarities in both games that seems to be working out very well for their comp in this match and is giving them the upper hand. Yeah, definitely. It really shows a, uh, a ton of trust in your other teammates to, uh, even though you're playing a lane position, to willingly build as if you were a semi-roam and just trust in your other carries to get the job done. There goes the Solar Storm. Pull, Force of Core is going to come out. You're going to pull them in. It's going to get blocked by a Crucible as Lorelei goes down. There goes the Black Claw continuing to push as the Heliogenesis comes down, finishing off the Catherine. Catherine goes down. There goes the ult from Reza. Reza jumping onto the box, looking to go after Celine. Heal from Adagio is going to come down and heal Reza up as he's able to get out safely. Armory goes down there in the mid lane. Black Claw still at half health as they go on to this Aegis here as Vox is very low there. Tony going in, there goes the root from um, a Meline, but the Solar Storm is going to come down, do some nice damage. Reza going in, not quite going to be able to finish him off, does get taken some damage from the Sanctuary. He's going to go down to Meline, but it looks like with this Black Claw still at half health, that is going to be game two for Tribeca Gaming. Oh, oh, it's almost well, down. Don't Black speak Claw too soon. looking to finish it off. Ace comes down, are they going to be able to stop it in time? Black Claw That was awful close. Hit. Oh, Not over yet. Nemesis wow. Treasure has one life remaining here as they're able to stop this push. I spoke too soon. I think I jinxed it. I'm I sorry, Tribeca. Have. I'm sorry, Tribeca. You got this, though. But, oh my gosh, Nemesis Hydra, great, great stop there. Clutch, one hit away from that Black Claw taking the Aegis. As they're able to go for that ghost wing, they gotta be very careful though. The armory down in the mid lane. Tribeca Gaming still has three turrets there in the mid lane, and those buffed minions are gonna be coming out. It's gonna be just an immense pressure here for Nemesis Hydra. Yeah, but man, it does not get closer than that. That was one or two Black Claw swipes away from being a 2 0 sweep. And while we might have spoken a bit too soon, now you have to think there's only a 2k gold difference. You've got a Ghostwing buff on the side of Nemesis Hydra. You know, could they turn this around? I think it's a very real possibility if they can uh, just shape up their team fighting. I think, you know, they have all the potential to get back into this game. Yeah, and this late into the game, you know, one team fight can change a game dramatically. You know, you get one ace this late into the game for Nemesis Hydra, and that's two, you know, depending how many people survive, that's two, if not three turrets possibly taken down. And if not, when it comes back up, possibly a Black Claw. Yeah, that's a very real possibility. And it's uh, it's something to keep our eyes on. They're definitely going to have to play somewhat cautious as they do have that armory down. But as far as I can tell, there aren't any cams put down in that base. So while they may, while they may not know it, there's not a possibility of the back door. But, uh... Man, that was an excellent Crucible blocking the Null Wave and the Catherine Silence. Wow, that is impressive to say the least. Yeah, That's no, uh, no uh, teleport boot shenanigans going on for uh, Tribeca yet in this game. Not yet, at least. But, uh, looks like both teams are maybe not looking for team fight, but just angling to get superior positioning, trying to see if they can catch someone out. Yeah, there goes the Force yeah. of Court. It's going to get blocked by the Crucible, though. As uh, Finn, there goes the flight Clump company. Flight company. <laughs> <laughs> there oh, goes the Tony. Solar Storm comes out. It's gonna get body blocked by the Catherine. Uh, as they're looking to get a nice team fight here. Versus Judgment comes down. It's gonna stun the Malin. Malin goes down as the damage just continues to come out. Here comes Kente in onto the Catherine. Catherine gets the stun off with the Merciless Pursuit. Tony going in, doing some nice damage, but the barrier coming out from Kente. Uh, is doing some good work. It's a 4v5 right now. There goes the War Treads. As they look to go back in, Stun comes out from Lorelei. It's going to keep them alive a little bit longer as they look to back off. But nice push coming out from Tribeca Gaming. It looks like they may look to take the Black Claw. Yeah, and that was that was a great team fight coming out of Nemesis Hydra. I think it's definitely their cleanest of the game so far. They did have that Melee get caught out, which is a bit unfortunate. But, uh... I don't know, is it enough to make a comeback? I think, you know, they've got the Malin back up, and uh, Tribeca haven't healed up, so they can't make a play on the Black Claw. But uh, as we see Tribeca rotating down, and Nemesis Hydra all grouped up towards that Black Claw, could we see a surprise sneak Black Claw here? It's a, quite a possibility with uh, Tribeca going in for this um, Ghostwing right now. 
Uh, but it looks like they're gonna come down and try to engage a team fight right here. Here's the fourth support. Quibble is gonna come down, not quite gonna connect. As Vox getting his stacks up, doing some nice damage. There goes the wave four coming out. Is gonna get Crucible. Silence not gonna go off. War Tread's coming off from Finn. Is gonna get try to get them out of there. There goes the Quibble gives a double stun off. As we see the stun coming out from Kensei there. Uh, it's gonna do some nice damage. Look at him take him out, but Kensei goes down as uh, Celeste goes down as well. There goes the Finn. And then looks like Adagio is gonna be next, but we do see Reza getting a push here. One turret down, looking for possibly a second turret here. Now, I mean, if he stayed alive, if he could hit that second turret, that that's he can defend enough with them being as low as they are. Yeah, he's not quite able to, but uh, uh oh, Malian's giving chase, and Reza looks like he might be caught out here. Yeah, he's stuck. Oh, he's in a corner between a tight place and a hard player boot. No. <laughs> you One know of what? Those things. Screw sayings. He's just dead. But there he is. <laughs> and wow, by less than a second, that is the ace coming through. And you know what? Don't call it a comeback. But all of a sudden, Nemesis Hydra, they're back in this game. They've got a black claw. They've got an no, ace claw. No, they do not! Celeste with the steel! Whoa! My I've seen it before, goodness. and I can't believe I just seen it again. First time I saw this was with the Kestrel Snipe. Got right in between all five of them, did not hit the finishing blow, but the mortal wound damage stole the Black Claw. My goodness. That just saved in the game. Oh my gosh. There goes another Solar Storm, gonna do some nice damage. Adagio does go down as they're chasing this fight, but Black Claw sitting at full health is just going onto this armory right now. Yeah, they can't chase for too long, and now Tribeca, if they can keep them from porting, this Black Claw could do some serious damage. Yeah, the armory is about to go down as the Black Claw is now going on to the Aegis. Nice damage coming out, though, as we do see the turret or the uh, you know armor like the armor dead goes down solar storm comes out doing some nice damage there goes a few heliogenesis stun coming out from lorelei not quite going to land on anyone force the court comes out there goes the quibble gonna stun the catherine as we just see the old coming out from reza reza chasing for that kill trying to get the lorelei but gets rooted and stunned and he's gonna go down black claw is out it is a 4v5 right now as wave four comes back in the silence off there goes the merciless pursuit court collapse is gonna land onto the box as we do see Catherine and them getting really low. There goes Achille Eugenius to do some nice damage. Box is going to get, no, Core Collapse not quite going to land. There goes the Solar Storm going to take out Celeste, or the Catherine. My goodness. The there goes the heal from the Adagio getting Celeste back up to high HP. <laughs> Celeste getting the triple kill there as they're looking to counter push this great turnaround there. Solar Storm what getting just kill and then Adagio coming in with a heal. Oh my gosh. This game is just getting better by the second as they're looking to push this with Kente still up. Yeah, just when you think Celeste is dead, that uh, that solar storm comes through, and all of a sudden she's got a double kill. She's back up to you know half health, and they're on the vein crystal. Yep, Kente taking some mean damage there from the Molly. But uh, look, you're gonna be able to get out of there. Teleport boots on the scout cam. Gonna take out Lorelei with the Reza. Reza coming in as the savior is gonna not quite get the second kill on Malene, but that's gonna be game. The scout cam help. I told you, teleport There it is. The teleport boot shenanigans. Oh, <laughs> add it again to secure this game for Tribeca Gaming. That's going to be game two of the series and the victory in this best of three for Tribeca Gaming. I have no words for that game right now. That was just all kinds of, with the Celeste steel on the Black Claw with the clutch Spellfire damage. Wow. I, I, I G have no words. G. That was oh. funny. <laughs> that was an amazing <laughs> match by both teams. Nemesis Hydra were doing such a good job bringing that back. They were on the road to victory there to bring it into a game three. But Tribeca Gaming was able to pull it out in the end and finish that off. Oh my, oh my gosh. Oh my my goodness. That was terrific. That's about as thrilling as an ending to a game can be. With the mortal wounds stealing the Black Claw, the teleport boot shenanigans, and about a two minute long team fight. My goodness. Oh, I thought I thought that Malene was gonna be able to fend it out, and then all of a sudden I see out the corner of my eye that, that like that tractor beam 
you know, animation of the teleporting onto the scout cam, and then all of a sudden you see Reza just get the kill on Lorelai. It's like, oh my gosh, what is going yeah. on? Reza uh, just popping in right in the nick of time with Finn right on his tail to uh, to provide the last little bit of damage they need to get a kill and secure the win. GG, yeah, well, well played that's both teams. Going to be it for this best of three series. Tribeca Gaming versus Nemesis Hydra. Tribeca Gaming coming out on top, two and zero oh in the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this series tonight. You know, come back. You know, we'll have more games tomorrow here at North American Champions League. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm Blake Nader, and uh, you know, I was joined by Tcon here in this game. I hope you guys have a wonderful night and keep that action going on the Halcyon Fold. Good night, everybody.